What's happening, guys? Welcome into another boxing breakdown and prediction show for this weekend's Super Featherweight Clash between WBC champion Miguel Burchelt and former WBO Featherweight champion Oscar Valdez in what should be an absolutely electric all-out Mexican war in Las Vegas on Saturday night. So let's jump into it. Burchelt enters this one as the heavy minus 400 favourite with Valdez coming back at a plus 275. And, you know, that's just the fighters. Burchelt has been on a phenomenal run of formerly, at, you know, winning the WBC crown back in 2017. And he's had a run of six straight title defences in succession as he looks to equal the nine title defences of the great Julio Cesar Chavez at the same weight. Valdez, though, is a serious threat to end that run on Saturday night, though. At 28, no, he's undefeated. And since hooking up with Canelo's trainer, Eddie Venoso, he's on a 4-0 run with three of those wins coming by stoppage also. At five foot five and a half inches, though, Valdez is the smaller man heading into this fight and has given up a five and a half inch reach advantage as well. So, you know, he's looking to acclimatize himself at this new weight. And uh, despite the fact Valdez has been on such a good run of form himself, it's hard to gauge exactly how effective the Renoso effect has been on him as a fighter up to this point. We've seen the improvements last month in Ryan Garcia, for instance, more patience, a greater level of timing. And those are all hallmarks of Canelo Alvarez as well, who's obviously the star pupil of Renoso's gym. But, you know, Garcia entered Renoso's gym at age 20. That's effectively a blank slate with which to work. But at age 30, Oscar Valdez looks like a fighter almost caught between two worlds right now in terms of styles. The change of trainers came after his blood and guts war with English fighter Scott Quigg back in 2018. Quigg broke his jaw in that fight um quig heavily outweighed valdez for that fight uh he had a fine he couldn't have won the title he came in way overweight on the scale so there were mitigating circumstances for that injury but nonetheless valdez's team knew his war of attrition style had to go so he sought out renoso's help in order to take his power and counterpunch into the next level but against jason velez most recently valdez looked lost for large parts early in that fight trying to follow Renoso's advice, but still having that inbuilt urge to trade in the center of the ring. You know, leading to Velez constantly peppering him with shots early and building up a significant lead in the scorecards. Now, Valdez eventually found his range, stopped Velez in the final round, but in Miguel Burchelt, he simply won't have the luxury of trying to figure himself out in this one, as the fight will be on from the very first bell. I was incredibly impressed with Burchelt's win over Jason Sosa just over a year ago. Sosa's one tough dude. He stood up to some really heavy punches from Nicholas Walters a few years ago. A guy we have to remember with an 80% KO ratio and took some incredible punishment of Vasily Lomachenko too in a fight his corner. Eventually had no choice but to throw the towel in. Burchell beat him emphatically, however, hurting him with a really hard left hook to the body, followed up with an overhand right to the temple, which dropped Sosa and effectively ended the fight in the fourth round, with Sosa's team again having to wave the fight off. While Burchell doesn't have great defence, he more than makes up for it with heavy-handed, sustained aggression, constantly roaming forward, looking to trade hard shots with his opponent. Now, no doubt Renoso sees vulnerabilities in that style, and Valdez can certainly pop. So there will be opportunities for him to counter in this fight and lay it on Borchelt in this one, but that's going to be easier said than done. I think a much more likely scenario here is after tasting Borchelt's power early, Valdez will have no choice but to concede ground to the bigger man. As Burchelt likely goes into hunter mode for the majority of the fight, Valdez will back up. He'll look to pick a spot in which to counter, you know, similar to what we saw in Canelo Triple G1. But it's going to be an incredibly long night for him trying to keep a fighter like Burchelt off him. And I believe he ultimately falls just short and possibly gets stopped late here. The Miguel Burchelt rounds 9 to 12 prop is going off at a plus 300. I believe there's some value there as Burchelt eventually wears down the smaller man and stops him late. But Look, I honestly wouldn't put anyone off taking a shot with the plus 700 stoppage on Valdez either. That looks a big price, and Burchett will be wide open for the counters all night, and Valdez can bang. But, you know, of the two, I think the Burchett late stoppage is the more likely here, and I'll make that my personal play for this weekend. That'll wrap things up for this edition of the Boxing Prediction Show. As always, leave us your thoughts. And you can also catch me over at Twitter at the Sportswolf83 and at my handicapper page, Kevin Dolan, over at Wager Talk. As always, until then, thanks for listening. Slana will you.